Hello. Hi guys. Um, we're back. We're not in our loft, in case you noticed. We're actually in in the church hall because there's a rehearsal yeah. going on in there. We got locked out. We didn't know about that. Um, Disaster. I'm the boss of this place, and still I can't get in. But we've got lovely photos of the church here. Yeah. Before it was bombed by those quite, evil bastards. Still quite original acoustic. It's lovely. Oh. Um, so we thought we'd talk to you about some wonderful perfumes. Yes. I've not tried any of these. Dan has. So these are the three new releases from MDCI. Exciting, um, huh? Very, very exciting. Good brand. From a house uh, which bought us fragrances like Chipotle Palatin and Invasion Bar Bar. I yes. think a lot of people are excited to see what these new releases. Yeah, it's been like, a long time coming, hasn't it? It's been a, it's been a while coming. Um, just a, a little bit about the house. Um, the fragrances. Do seem quite expensive. In particular, yeah. I'm going to show you my uh, bottle of Chipre Palatin, which I bought recently, which is a thing of outstanding beauty. Oh, I mean, it looks really it's gorgeous. Absolutely marvellous. It's a beautiful thing, but uh, you may think 350 euros for a 75 ml. If you get the bust version of this, it's 355 euros for a 75 ml bottle, which seems like a lot. Why would you spend that? I should just uh, tell you that if you buy from the website, if you spend 350 euros from the website, you get an extra 120 mils free. Incredible. So that's, um, they do 12 mil sample bottles, which come as groups of um, five. And if you buy the bust version, you get two of the packs of five, so you get 10 of the bottles. I'm just going to show you. I mean, that's a great deal, isn't it? Show you it's one of the packs. Juice. So this is, this is one of the packs, lovely little kind of velvet lined. Um, five sets of 12 more bottles. So as I said, for 350 euros, you're getting seven 75 mil bust version plus another 120 mil bottle. So you can have a good, idea. A good chunk of the whole range. Um, so that's the kind of the, the, the finances aside. So let's talk about the three new fragrances. So they're all based on um, paintings. The three fragrances are uh, Bleu Satin, um, uh, Cui Cavalier, and uh, the third one is Long Organ. Uh, let's talk about Bleu Satin, which is, I think, one which be, people have been quite excited There's by. been some hype, hasn't there? So, um, the nose behind this one is a Cecil Zerokian? Zerokian. 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 Um, Cecil, to my friends. Cecil. We're, we don't know yet. Um, who has made fragrances for MDCI before, um, but she's also the nose behind uh, uh, Tango. By yeah, Aura uh, Sublime um, yeah. and Private Label by Jovoy. So, good pedigree. Though. Expectations yeah. were high. So, let's, let's see what it smells like. Um, let's what find a bottle more. So, I, I, I've decanted those 12 um, uh, mil splash bottles, I've, I've decanted them into little spray samples. I've had these uh, for over a month now, I wanted to give them a, a reasonable testing, so I decanted them into little spray bottles. So let's see what you think. I'm I, so excited about this. We have discussed this a, a little bit before, and Joe knows slightly what I feel about this. And when I spray this for the first, Straight away, for the first time, one thing leapt to mind. Okay. They might not leap to your mind. You might oh, completely disagree. It absolutely does. It absolutely does. It's a word we don't like to say very much on it's this channel. We're trying, to, we're trying to try and avoid it because it's a bit of a dirty word in terms of fragrancery. It's not Macbeth. This smells a lot like Aventus. Yeah. <laughs> um, which I was, I was really surprised. Lots of people, you know, one of the most popular niche fragrances of the last, whatever it is, uh, 10 years or so, um, much, much, much copied. And when we saw a, a perfumer of this pedigree and a house of this calibre, um, I was really shocked on first spray. I mean, I kind of read the notes list and I saw uh, citrus over a black currant over a kind of leathery base. Um, but when I actually smelt it, just the first thing which came to mind was Creed's Absolutely. Aventus. That is very, very bloody cynical, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? I mean, I don't mean what you're saying. I mean, what's, what's actually in the, in the bottle there? So let's let's ignore the comparison. Let's try yeah. and ignore the comparison for a bit. So it's a very invigorating citrusy opening. It's a very balanced kind of lemon and bergamot. It's nice. It's very nice. Nothing's. Yeah. I, I I don't. I'm normally not a big fan of lemon, but I think it's balanced nicely with bergamot here. Um, it's not sharp in the same way that 
No. It's not you can get the sort of association with various cheap cleaning products. No, I think, I think it, 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 it's round from the side. It's, it's no Aqua Viva by Perfume and Roma, though. No, no, that, it's not that out and out. Really I think, I think it's, I, it's even difficult to pick out. I think it's difficult to pick out a single citrus. I think it's, it's very well balanced from the start. But already you're starting to get, um, I think they list it as a cassis note. I feel I could yeah. get it as, as a black current note. That cassis is something I associate more with liqueur. So it doesn't I think have the darkness of pure black current. There's a slight, yeah, I know you mean, slight, slight yeah. sweet black current juice rather than. The, the sort of syrupy yeah. um, of sort of cassis stuff, yeah. Um, I papyrus again. I'm a little, a little there's a bit of there's, there's a little bit of dryness, and there is a there's a hint of leathery warmth. I don't think this is an, an out and out kind of leathery fragrance. This is more of a, a kind of a woody citrus, I'd say. But there's a, a little bit of yeah. a of a, a leathery undertone. I don't mean to be mean at all, but. That isn't wowing me in any way. I know it's straight on card. And I, I'm not even thinking about Aventus now. I'm just thinking purely if I picked that up in 2009 before Aventus was a thing, I don't think that would have rocked my world. It's it's, very it's, nice. it, it's 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 quite an invigorating opening. I did. It got a little bit interesting as it as it developed. I I I, I warn this. Um, I've had at least kind of three days spread over a couple of months of kind of wearing, really wearing this um, and li living with it. Um, I found there was quite a nice jasmine note which started to emerge in the mid. Okay. Um, so after this quite invigorating citrus opening, this jasmine offered didn't didn't steer it in a particularly floral direction. It just gave it a bit of roundness and body, okay. but it kind of warmth as well. So it, yeah. it became thick. It just became warm and kind of cuddly and quite attractive. And you were not a fan of jasmine once upon a time, well, you're not a huge fan, so no, but but I, if you can appreciate that, I think it, I think it's managed. It's done well, quite well. So there's a slightly sweet floral. Okay, I, I'm not sure if it's jasmine or if it's um, hedion, which is this synthetic jasmine mm. note, uh, which is it's one of the most um, one of the most well-known synthetics, I guess, alongside ambroxy and, and coumarin. Gives this kind of round richness. It was first used. Well, it was famously used in Osovage by yes. um, by, by Dior. Um, it gives this nice quite sexy kind of roundness. The other note, which I, I don't really detect from this card at all, but when I wore it, um, I found it came out in the mid and towards the end was saffron, and especially. A couple of hours in um, wearing this, I got this saffron note, which at a distance reminded me of Baccarat Rouge. This doesn't, this fragrance does not smell like Baccarat Rouge, so it's not, you know, it's not a clone or, but it's just that, that saffron note you get in Baccarat Rouge. I yeah, I, I, even on here, I'm getting a little hint of something. There's a little, it's a little gentle fieriness. Yeah, it's very, it, very gentle. It adds a little, a little bit of interest, and I, I did find towards the end it became more prominent. But I, 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 I'm seeing all of these things as distraction therapy a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm Ways trying to, to distract. I'm being, I'm being mean, but I'm trying to find positives. Uh, no, this is good. And, you know, we're doing, we're doing a good hot back uh, here. And it is very nice. It, it's very nicely blended. The quality of the ingredients is clearly, pleasant. It's clearly good. It's pleasant. For um, sure. I. I mean, I would also say, you see, um, so as I said, I decanted this into a spray bottle because I, I like I like to spray rather than just a dab. Um, Very nice bottles. When I wore this, the three occasions I wore this, I did have to reapply quite a lot because I felt it didn't last very well mm. and it didn't project. Um, nobody, I didn't get any comments or any uh, comments on it. Not, not that I necessarily go out searching for that. <laughs> but for... for uh, you know, I've, tried to, I've tried to be quite positive for this, and I'm, I have to say I'm quite disappointed given the brand and the perfumer, but this seems like a, an Aventus-style fragrance without very good performance, a yeah. really high price. So we're talking, uh, it's $250 uh, for 75 mil. So that's 200 15, 20 quid. Yeah, something like that. So it, it, it's a lot of money. It's a nice, pleasant fragrance, but so is Cedrac Bars by Montserrat. Yeah. And Cedrac Bars lasts better and performs better. I I'm, I was quite surprised by this. You know, quite disappointed. I at don't think at that price point, 
I want to smell something, and the first word that comes out of my mouth really needs to be fuck. <laughs> I really think. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry to be. I'm sorry to be. It's. I think it's. Di- I think it's difficult because we're comparing something like Chipotle Palata or Invasion Barbar, which are very, very special fragrances. They're ones, but if yeah. you have the in your collection, there the the, the the crown jewel. This is not even a bit of brass decoration, no. in my opinion. And the house have set themselves up for that. If they if they make masterpieces yeah. like that. You've got to keep up that standard. Okay. You drop a Michelin star in the second year of trading. Let's move on. Coming. I've thrown that one on the floor. This the next one is we'll uh, Queer Cavalier. Um, so I should I should have said. So the, the first, all of these fragrances are, pa- are based on paintings. So the first one, Bleu Satin, was based on uh, the Blue Boy by Gainsborough. I'll put a picture up here of the Blue Boy by Gainsborough. Um, this next one, Queer Cavalier, is based on the Charging Chasseur by uh, Jericho. Again, I'll put. I need to see that one. I, I don't think I've seen it. That was the guy on the horse. Oh, that's the, you showed me the, the, the yeah, yeah. pictures. The 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 oh, he's, he's up here. So anyway, and um, Claude, um, I ordered these from uh, MDCI directly. So Claude, who's the kind of the head of MDCI, um, sent a couple of lines about some of these. And about this, he said, a kind of monster fragrance, clearly not for everyone, but quite interesting. Sounds good. That sounds good. Right, you haven't smelled this before. Let's see what I mean, you... I, I like a leather. I'm, I'm always keen to see what goes on. Right. See what you get. A queer cavalier. I mean, I found this one far uh, more complex. Yeah. Um, I, I, I will just say now, I don't... This one develops quite a bit more, so I don't think you'll be able to get everything. Um, but it'd be interesting to see some of your first impressions and see what you think. I like it. My, my first impression is a, is a very gentle, a very gentle suede right off the bat. I'm, I don't get a big sort of arresting herbaceous or citrus opening here. I get, mm. I get straight to the heart of the matter here. Mm. It, some yeah, gentle, it, some it, gentle it floral like, stuff here. I think it feels like you've kind of skipped top notes a little bit. I got this Queer Ottoman by Parfum Empire is, is something that actually yeah. instantly comes to mind. I found now, I mentioned to you earlier, I got this kind of cyprial note, which came off as, as well as there was leather, there was a kind of a slight boot polish quality. Do you get that at all? And again, I don't know... Now that you say it, I, I, can, I can picture it. I don't it know if it's sure. because yeah. I'm also looking at the picture and I'm, I'm thinking of his polished boots. But with, with cyprial, which is... Sometimes people call it kind of an oily grass quality, but yeah. I get a kind of boot polish quality. And I... I, I I got a little bit of bitter citrus as well. It's, it's not sparkling citrus at all. It's nothing like Bleu Satin. It's, you know, there's a kind of darkness to it. And if I, I, don't, I don't get so much of that, but I do get, mm. I do get something in the top that's, that I know is sort of steering my nose away from what's probably a bigger, a bigger dry down than I'm imagining, mm. if that makes any sense. <clears throat> there's, there's something that I get a little bit of, um, it's an association with my grandmother's house. But when she used to vac, she had one of these really old hoovers, I think probably from the, like from the 60s or 70s. It was like a really old thing with, you know, the, <laughs> a canvas bag. And, and it was, but it, it left a certain smell in the room. It, there, was a, there was a weird sort of like carpety smell, mm. slightly vinyl smell. And maybe the smell of, the smell of, a, of an LP. Yeah. In a, in a sort of leather sleeve or something. Yeah, I, well, I think I get maybe the LP thing. Again, the same thing is strange. Maybe that's linked to that kind of boot polish thing. I think you will... It's been um, treated somehow. It's a sort of treated leather. I think it's obvious from what we're saying this is a bit more complicated than the, than the yeah. uh, previous fragrance. Well, I'm interested to find out more. This was... The start. Uh, when I smelled this, I then looked at some of the notes and I noticed there was Oud listed. Uh, ah. And I was very surprised because at this stage you get no Oud whatsoever. But as it developed, you did start to get... Um, a sort of an oud. Now, I think it's, again, I discussed this with Joe earlier, I think it's difficult when you smell fragrances like a Riche Doré, um, or even something like oud palau with that big Loatian oud. Yeah. When you start to get big funky ouds, you notice that a lot of the ouds used in Western perfume are quite synthetic and quite soft and quite gentle. Yeah. And the oud which started to come up in this was was quite... Gen- uh, gently medicinal, yeah. maybe. Yeah, Gen- I think that's a very good way of describing it. It's not funky, it's, it's slightly medicinal. 
Um, and then it did start to combine with a slight ruse accord. I'm get, I'm starting to get a ruse. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's coming say, already. Yeah. So it's weird that it, it kind of, as it opens, you get this kind of hint of cipriol, hint of very bitter citrus, hint of soft leather, and then it's you are steered in a different direction. Do you know, I, I, I know I'm always comparing things, but it's just because I, I like to have references. But that's what we think we have references and association. Yeah, Fine. absolutely. I, but I mean, comparing to another fragrance, I start to pick up something of London by Gallivant. Yeah, with that kind that of rose leather, leather, leather jacket. Slightly dusty. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Just a hint of it, though. It's interesting, but, but that's something you expect um, from a company like Gallivant to do quite indie, quite creative yeah. things. Yeah, so it's Well, it's not something based on MDCR, but, the, you know, they, they did say this is adventurous for them. I did... It doesn't I, smell classically French. It doesn't smell classically French at all. And I did find as it developed, I was quite surprised at this um, rose oud de cord, which I didn't... It didn't seem like a luxurious rose oud accord that came through. Yeah, it's like a thought, isn't it? Like a whisper of something. It's like a thought. It's slightly synthetic, slightly playful. Um, as opposed to Bleu Satin, as opposed to Bleu Satin, I found the performance of this pretty substantial, pretty hefty. It lasted a long time. I could yeah. certainly detect it after 10 hours or so, and the performance was quite big. Oh, well, that's good to know. Um, it's got some I, I find it interesting. I can't say that I like it. It's hard to like, isn't it? It, it feels like you want to know more, and you might you might wear it a couple of times to get to know it. But is it is it something that actually yeah. wows you? It does just feel like the, the direction it's going in doesn't quite gel with the opening. Yeah, and it, it's weird, and I can't that quite I can't it. quite put the smell together with the aesthetic. No. Anyway, slightly interesting. Oh. But it's, I mean, it's definitely more interesting than Blue Satin, right? Definitely more interesting. Right, next one. Right. Got the down here. So the last one is, um, so the, sorry, I should say that the perfumer behind um, uh, both Cui Cavalier and uh, L'Homme au Gant is uh, Nathalie uh, Feistauer. Um, she's uh, done fragrances for Comte des Garçons, um, Etat Libre d'Orange, and Hermès. Oh, so she's a, a prolific uh, Yeah, prolific perfumer, great pedigree. So, um, L'Homme is also by her. And L'Homme is based on a painting by Titian. We'll put the, the, the painting up here, and it's called uh, Man with Glove. Um, and great just painting. reading a little bit, uh, painting. Oh. Great painting. Painting, yeah. 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 Not great painting. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so the, the, the painting has a reputation as being uh, enigmatic because it seems to portray a nobleman, an aristocrat, but the way he is posed suggests that he is something other than noble, so there could be something lurking beneath. So, does... I, I love that painting. Yeah, very good, very good, very good. That's funny. Great experiment, this, by the way. It's a, it's a very good experiment. It's it's just, you know yeah. I need some of those. Right, okay. Doesn't smell it's MDCI. Does very, it? very hard to pick anything <laughs> <laughs> distinctive. These are really kind of enig enigmatic. So I got this kind of woody, nutmeggy. Again, I got a hint of that cipriol, that slightly bittery boot polishy. I got a hint of medicinal oud in the opening. I, think I can't. I can't put that together. I'm, I'm getting a slight, very light, powdery violet thing. Really? Very, very distant. I mean, hardly anything at all, but just very, very. I get much more of a kind of tiny. nutty wood thing. That's really interesting. You know, I think she's aiming for something enigmatic, and I think she's certainly achieved that. Gently, yeah, sort of gently. Gently spiced. This is another it's one. Very, very hard to actually discern. What's this going is on. another one where uh, oud is listed as a, as a main note, and I and I, I, I wow. didn't, uh, you know, uh, uh, we could discuss this earlier. Oud and Western perfume. If you look at Tom Ford's oud words, I don't detect any oud at all there. Tom Ford's tobacco no, oud. I don't detect any oud whatsoever. An oud cord of some sort. That's yeah, a, um, and, so, and I wonder. That, so this is a more of a general woody note rather than necessarily an oud note. That comes across to me as a very transparent woody thing. 
Mm. Something I would expect from Olivia Giacobetti for, for Dip Tea, maybe. Yeah, possibly. I did feel, now, as this develops soon, I think you're already starting to hear it a bit. I got quite a, a nice boozy vanilla accord started to, started to yeah. kind of creep up. Um, and, and as that went further, it was kind of ramped up by a bit of kind of creamy benzoin. And so after this um, slightly difficult to pin down with the opening, I did say to Joe, I think these two are difficult to smell off the back like this. And so I yeah. you know, spent a bit more time. I need to wear these on skin and really see what But after that with the opening, I thought That's it went thing. in this vanilla y benzoin yeah. dire direction. And it started to become very cuddly. And the, especially with the benzoin and the vanilla, the fragrance I thought of was Eau de Mission. Yeah. Which is an absolute gem, isn't it? Um, it is also about six pounds for hundred mil. <laughs> but, but, it's a, a, but, but people, and I guess the, the other um, comparison you could make is to the Gala Spiritus du Bleu, which is a very expensive. Um, it <laughs> is going in. It is going in that gentle, yeah. boozy vanilla direction, isn't it? Yeah. But why the opening? Why the weird? It's weird, isn't it? But, but, the last but, but, the but I think I think that's yeah. it's just a kind of wrong foot you slightly. But I found this lasted very well on me, very well, mm. and what I was left with was not the nutty, woody smell of the opening, but was this vanilla -y, faintly woody, but basically vanilla -y benzo benzoin film. Yeah. Um, the other feel, the other thing I got to this, um, and this was something I, I had to look up in the notes, because I was getting a kind of a round warmness in the mid that I couldn't quite um, uh, pin down, and I looked at this uh, hedion, Again, this oh, sin yes. the synthetic note, uh, which you know, as soon as you read it, you think, "Oh yeah, that's that's." It's, it feels almost. Fr it's not overtly floral. It's got a slight jasmine feel, and yeah. it just rounds it and flesh out. And the other Ooh. synthetic note is cumarin as well. Ah, okay. Again, it's which um, I, I sometimes find it difficult to differentiate between uh, cumarin and vanilla, tonka bean and vanilla. It's, yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of a fine line. I'm starting to get now a combination of. Turkish delight and those, you know, baklava I think pastries. Just there's a little sort I of. I think you, you mean there, there, there's, a, there's a borderline gourmand quality yeah. to this this kind of rich tiny, sweetness tiny. with a hint of nuttiness. Yeah. This lasted really well on me. Yeah. It, it, it went kind of faint-ish, but I it did last pretty much all day, and I. I enjoyed this the most out of the three. I found yeah. the drawing down to be very sexy. But I think I would as well. I didn't enjoy it much. I enjoyed it a bit more, but not much more than Eau de Cologne by um Um Eau de Mission. Yeah. I um Cologne de Mission. Yeah. Yeah. Which costs I would about enjoy that more just on the fact that I, I got mine for three pounds in two <laughs> Um, it was nice though, I mean, but if you said to me, this is, this is MDCI, hmm. I would be confused. I can, ima I can imagine it's a more indie house. I don't know if you, can, if you remember what it was when you first sprayed it, it's already settled down to this yeah. slightly kind of resinous round thing, and I feel this is where it stays for a while. It was quite closed at first, to the point where yeah. I couldn't quite distinguish what was going on. Ge very, very gently boozy. I, I mean, another thing to say, is that the quality is clearly there, the quality of the ingredients. Mm. Because the segue between these, these stages is very, very smooth. There was no gap. Yeah. It's, it's sort of lasted and then sort of morphed without, without a sort of great rocking of the So back. let's just, for a moment here, so this is going back to Creek of Value. Okay, yes. Now, do you, I just, I just picked that off and I, I started to get that rose oud. I'm getting a rose root. I'm getting a little bit of like pepper or chili or something as well that gives a little bit more lift. Mm. I have to say, I think, I mean, I smell that a lot of times. But if I picked this off, off of nowhere and didn't tell you what it is, what would you say it was? I'd have to say, very sadly. Cedric Bar's why. I'd sure. have to say, yeah, I'd have <laughs> to say something potentially even worse. I don't mean to be mean, but one of these. Spectrometry, gas spectrometry, machine, reverse engineered yeah. things. If you said that, if you said that was a twenty quid clone of Aventus, yeah, I believe you. I'm not wearing it on skin, so I don't. But no, I, I did, can't I, for that. I, I wore it three times. So I was really quite shocked the first time I wore it. So the, con um, the concept is clearly 
it's clearly a drive from that. We're trying to cash in on that. If you saw um, one of our uh, recent videos, we did a keep tame life, and I include uh, I include the Chipre Palatin in that as a fragrance yeah. I absolutely adore. Absolutely. And, and, and I said that you know if I had to choose a signature scent, it, it might be that. So I've got a great deal of love for this house. Um, yeah. Same I'm, here. I'm quite surprised. It's, by, uh, and it's, it's not meaning to attack the house at all, but it's no. quite disappointing for something that you've been waiting for a while. Yeah. You know, for the, for the house to come up with something else. And then the kind of conventional, you know, a rose oud that you can sort of smell a hundred times, mm. an Aventus inspired thing. You know, you could, you could do an Aventus inspired thing and you could throw in, you could throw in a bass note of petrol mm. and a middle note of like, I don't know, Skyfall, rain from Botswana, whatever. Who cares? Burning experiment or something. Yeah, but it doesn't change the fact it's mm. clearly a pineapple, blackcurrant inspired Aventus. Hmm. And that's disappointing, the fact that they yeah. haven't gone there. Because uh, they, don't, they don't have to follow the trend. They're no. not going to be a mass market scent. It's difficult because I guess they may be looking for a big hit, but it's interesting that they seem to have gone for something quite popular and the two other things to. a bit more adventurous. And they don't seem to have quite got it right. And as a set, if you're going to release them as a set, yeah. they need to have a sort of common thread of some sort. Sure. So the, the other thing, a little thing about the presentation, I love the original uh, bus yeah. bottles. Um, with these samples, I was sent a few of these little uh, little stickers like this. Um, and I thought they would just give, to give me an idea of the paintings which go with them. But I'll, I'll put a picture up here now from what I've seen on Lucky Scent and other sites of what the bottles appear to be, which is a, a traditional non-bust MDCR bottle with these, with these stickers just put on them, which look really cheap, <laughs> which look a pretty naff, so... You could do an engraving of some sort, or just, I, I think... For the, for the money... Leave them plain, I think leave them plain, leave like them, they are at the yeah. moment, and just have the, have the title yeah. in there. Tr um, we're really trying to find positives, because they're a house that we really like. And the, I don't the positive is the quality of the ingredients, mm -hmm. though. They, they are really nicely made. You can tell, but even on the I mean, they are, they are, I mean, yeah. They're good quality. Plus, I think, even though it doesn't last very long, I can, I think people will like it on first spray. Yeah. But I yeah. just, I can't, I cannot, hand on heart, advise people to spend $250 on Do you, do you know what the acid like? test is? For me, the acid test, like with great singers, if you gave me a load of these sticks now and said, What's that? I could smell it for days and I'd go, is it Rose Darby? Is it, is it um, Udes Bahan? Is it Portrait of a Lady? No, not that. I mean, that's a very unique thing. But lots I mean, of Rose Darby. On my hand here, I've got yeah, something very special. special. From the House of Trophy Men. Hasunai. Hasunai, which is an extraordinary fragrance. Absolutely fragus. stunning. And, I, and it smells a lot better than all these three. Anyway. If you, but the thing, if you gave, if you gave me a, a, a card, Sprayed with super palatine, you could give me that 24 hours yeah. after spraying it, and I would let's know immediately what it was. To, to, to finish this video, I know we just have a, let's just have a, a spray of, of, of super yeah. palatine, just to remind ourselves how good it is, because it is. This is the masterpiece. This is a wonderful house, capable of great things. Look at that spray, a great spray as well. That's what we need. It's wonderful. So we don't it's take the house. Recognizable. Please do lovely things like this again. Yeah. Don't lose your soul. Make what you want to make. But anyway, let us. Be if you have tried these fragrances, let us know and give us your input. You might think we're completely wrong. Yeah, um, well, that's great. But let us know. Super Panel House smells amazing. But these three don't. I am fine. So I'm sorry. But until next time, happy sniffing. Bye.